congratulations. You've just joined the family of Nordic trackers, people who enjoy the world's best cardiovascular exercise. It's a very large and growing family. We've sold hundreds of thousands of Nordic tracks since 1976, when cross-country skiing indoors for fitness originated. We at Nordic Track are very proud of our products and anxious for you to experience their many benefits firsthand. The purpose of the video is to make the Nordic Track familiar to you so you can really enjoy it. First, we'll review the setup procedure. Then I'll demonstrate the Nordic Track, after which Ed, who is visiting our showroom today, will try it. I think you'll be able to identify with him as he takes his first Nordic Track strides. You've probably already assembled your Nordic Track according to your instruction booklet, but let's just make sure it's set up correctly. The 303 Basic model and the 505 model come already assembled. On the Pro and the Achiever, the front legs must be bolted onto the base to look like this. Notice that the legs are angled forward to offer maximum stability of the machine. I'll pull the pin near the front legs and raise the upright tube. Let's align the holes in the tube with those in the black tube casing and push the pin through the holes. If this is done correctly, the upright tube can't be pushed down because the pin holds it securely. To lift the arm exerciser, pull out the pin by the handlebar. Grab the arm exerciser here and here and lift upwards. Now we'll line up the holes in the tube with the holes in the black triangle. When it's new, the tube may be stiff. Use both hands here on this part of the tube for greater leverage. Adjust the tube until you can see that the holes are lined up. It's still stiff, so I'll slightly turn the knobs counterclockwise. Just a little loosening will allow easier movement. There they are. The holes are in line. Now I'll push the pin in through the holes and tighten the knobs, turning clockwise. If the arm exerciser is correctly set up, you won't be able to pull it up or push it down because the pin holds it securely to the upright tube. If the arm exerciser is still loose, please replay the video from the beginning and follow the instructions more carefully. Let's pull the pad all the way down so the curved side fits up to your body. Now it's almost time to step onto the Nordic track. But first, we'll raise the leg resistance so the skis stay put when I step on. For the Achiever and Elite, adjust the resistance knob only while skiing and never force the knob. Let's put the skis on the Nordic track. The toe pieces should be directly below the pad. As you step onto the skis, place each foot into the toe piece. Your body goes up to the pad. Now, to set the pad at hip level, carefully loosen the arm exerciser by turning the two knobs counterclockwise just a little until you can slide it up or down to your hip level. When it's at hip level, tighten both knobs very snugly. On the Elite, a special slide allows you to properly position your body over the flywheel while using the machine. Let's take a look at how to adjust the height of the hip pad. We have a special adjustment right here. Now I'm sure this will accommodate even someone over 6'5". Always tighten the adjustment knob before using. Now let me show you the motion to use on the Nordic Track. As you can see, the Nordic Track is the most complete exercise available today. You work both arms and legs. Notice the long reach of my arms. I'm working not only my arms, but my shoulder and back muscles as well. You have two resistance settings on the Nordic Track. This one for the arms is turned clockwise for greater resistance, counterclockwise for less. The arm resistance adjustment is the same on all Nordic tracks, but only the Achiever and Elite have the gauge that measure that resistance. On the Achiever and Elite, this is the leg resistance setting. This gauge measures that resistance. When you walk or run, your weight is on your feet. The same applies here. 
Keep your weight on your feet, not on the pad. Stand up straight. The pad is just there to keep you from going off the front end of the machine. It's not meant to support your body. Notice how I put all my weight on one foot when it's in the forward position, push against the pad, and slide my ski to the rear. Then lift my heel, totally on weight, and drag that ski forward weightless. Now my weight is on the opposite foot. It's similar to walking, but much more beneficial because I'm working against resistance. You can work the arms alone or just the legs. But as long as you're putting in the time, you may as well work the total body. You can go as slow or as quickly as you like. It's so flexible, you can work out as much or as little as you wish. The flywheel provides such a nice, smooth motion. You can glide from one stride to the next. It's really fun. It's quiet, so you can converse with others in the room or watch TV. Care to try it, Ed? I'd love to try it. Let's start with just the arms first. I'll set the leg resistance on a higher setting so the skis won't slide backward while you learn the arm motion. For the achiever and elite, adjust the resistance knob only while skiing and never force the knob. Here, take the grips. Now you want to move your arms way forward and way back, almost like a pendulum, almost straight at the elbows. That's it. Let me show you how the resistance is almost infinite. Let's turn it way up. Okay, and now we'll turn it way down. Just experiment with the different tensions until you find the one that's right for you. Everyone in the family can set it to their own strength level. Now, how's that resistance feel? Is that about right? That seems good. Okay, good. Let's put the grips in the clips and concentrate on just the legs. I'll set the leg resistance to a lower setting. Now, hold on to the handlebars and step up close against the pad. Okay, now, remember, don't lean over the pad. Stand tall with your weight on your feet, just like when you walk. Take short steps. When your foot is forward, Put all your weight on it and push it back. Uh, no, Ed, okay, you're, you're doing this. You're pushing the ski forward with your weight on both feet. All right, try standing totally on just one ski, the one you're pushing back. When you ski cross country, you push the ski back, unweight it, and pull it forward. That's right. Wait on one foot, then push it back. Wait on the other foot. There you go, good. You're shifting the weight correctly now. Now try to keep the flywheel going. When you come to the end of the stride, lift your heel and bring your other foot forward immediately. That feels better. Keep your legs moving. The faster you go, the smoother the motion. There you go, there you go. Now you're really moving along nicely. Now. Look at your hands. See those white knuckles? That's because you're pressing your weight onto your hands. It's important to keep your weight on your feet. Your hands are no longer bearing your weight. Stand up tall. There, there. Now you're skiing correctly with your weight on your feet. Now that you're not white knuckled anymore, I think we're ready to try the arms and the legs together. Okay, why don't you stop for a second and bring your right ski forward the other one back, that's it. Okay, take the grips and reach your left arm forward and the right one back, good. Okay, now your arms are gonna be in opposite position from your legs. You're gonna pull the left arm and the right leg back together, okay? It's just like walking and swinging your arms, okay? Good. Now remember to stand up straight like when you walk. I feel so uncoordinated. No, no, you're doing fine. It just takes a few minutes to learn, that's all. Most activities worth doing take a little learning. Now, just one more point. The reason you feel uncoordinated is because you're pulling your left arm back with your left ski. It makes you waddle from side to side. Here, stop for just a second. Pull this hand and that ski back together. That's it, keep moving. Good, good, there, now you've got it all together. 
Does that feel more balanced? Yes, it really is like walking, only smoother. Now, later, you may want to lean forward, like cross-country skiers do, but try that only after you've been on the machine for a while. Now, this is the motion of cross-country skiers on the track in the snow. It's fun, and it offers a little variety to the workout. Try it later on, just to vary the workout a bit. You're doing great, Ed. You've really got the motion now. You care to try the incline? Sure. The pro, the achiever, and the elite can all be elevated to provide a greater workout. All three can be raised to 10 degrees. I'd like to point out that you step off the elite to raise the elevation. When lowering it, stay on and lean forward. A lighter weight person may have to step off, remove the ski, and press the front down like this at first. Hold on to the pad and the arm exerciser. This will become unnecessary as the Nordic track is used more. I'll set this elite to seven degrees. Let me caution those of you at home about using the elevation too soon. Be sure you're confident with your Nordic track on the flat before trying it elevated. Ed, I think you're ready to try it elevated. Let me give you a few pointers. Even after you increase the resistance, you'll still slide backwards. You should expect that when you first try it elevated. Use the handlebar and ski with just your legs until you can keep moving comfortably. Then add the arm movement later. When we elevate the pro or achiever, it's best to first set the upright tube straight up. To do that, simply set the detent pin at the base into the lower set of holes. Now let's elevate your pro to a medium setting of about five degrees. Now I'll pull the pin and lift up the machine, allowing the leg to drop down. Then we reset the pin into the desired hole. Repeat this with the other leg. The elevation provides an even greater workout. You can work the quadriceps very thoroughly on a grade of two to 10 degrees. It's just like skiing uphill. To compensate for the gravity pulling you down as you ski, set the leg resistance higher. Now remember, when you start, bring your foot forward immediately. Okay, here goes. Good. Very good. How's that feel? It's great. It feels good and provides a terrific workout. Oh, it sure does. This videotape provides you with a basic starting point for your Nordic Track workout. You should also read the assembly, operating instructions, and training program that came with your Nordic Track. You are provided with a four-week exercise program designed for the individual who is just beginning an exercise program. And to help you see measurable improvement in your health and conditioning level, use the enclosed order information to receive your Nordic Track Personal Fitness Record Book, an exercise log designed exclusively for the Nordic Track user to record weight, pulse rate, incline level, resistance level, distance, length, and speed of your workout. Once you've completed your four-week program, you may want to send for Nordic Track's intermediate and advanced level instructional video. We hope you found this instruction helpful. If you should have any questions, call our customer service staff who are well trained to assist people on the phone about learning to use Nordic Track. The number to call is 1-800-426-5431 and our Canadian number is 1-800-433-9582. Enjoy your Nordic Track and the healthier, happier lifestyle it provides.